For thinking that my love could hold you Please forgive me, I don't know what I do Please forgive me, I can't stop loving you And don't deny me this pain I'm going through Please forgive me, I need you like I do Oh baby love For the night and for KTV's the first season is Rina Vianrama. Tequila, tabaco, ron, amor a la mexicana, caliente al ritmo del sol, despacio y luego me mata, me macho de corazón, amor a la mexicana, de cumbia, guapango el sol, caballo, bota y sombrero, tequila, tabaco, ron, amor a la mexicana, caliente al ritmo del sol. Despacio y luego me mata, mi macho de corazón. And that was actually a flashback of the first ever key TV. It was done at the Bellevue. And uh, the Bellevue actually is all the, way up in the, all the way out in the front. That was one of the spots everybody loved to go. So why not the Bellevue? That was about 17 years ago, Jenny, somewhere around there, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, welcome back. We're about to venture off into our second segment. We're here with Jenny. Good we love morning. hanging out with Jenny. <laughs> there we go. The intro is on. And we'd like to remind you as well, we're in with uh, our DJs. Now we're talking here, no fear DJs. Have, they've, they've got this, this, this massive thing coming up tomorrow. It's actually called, uh, uh, tell me, tell me again. Let's go, let's go mine. Project X, yes, yes, yes. Paint this, that, todos. Come in your dirtiest, ugliest clothes. Dirtiest, ugliest clothes. Dirtiest, ugliest shoes. As a matter of fact, you might not even want to wear shoes. No go do your hair. No go do your hair. Put on your paper long stockings, two pom pom, and got it on the side. And you're good. <laughs> it's, that, it's that easy. But Jenny, it's nice to have you in. It's Thank always you. nice to have you looking beautiful, loving the green. We were painting a while ago, and when you stepped in, I felt you that green? I, yeah, I felt that key feel, you know? I felt that I don't know. I don't know why. But this morning we've got uh, uh, a next Im very important topic, and it's actually transition tips for parents. That's right. You know, so, uh, you know, uh, that's definitely, it's, I wouldn't want to say it's, uh, it comes with nature, because you still have to build yourself up for a transition. Mm -hmm. So tell us about it, Jenny. Uh, how do you okay. transition? Transitioning for parents. Good, Good morning, Belize. Um, we're talking today, transition is going from one thing to another. And we're talking today to parents mm -hmm. about their children going from primary school 
that music is distracting. It, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> because so it's your favorite one, just like that. <laughs> They'll be lowering it. Going from, going from primary school to high, to school, high school, and then high school to sixth form, mm -hmm. and then sixth form to college or university, yeah. sometimes, many times abroad. Mm. Um, and it's really important. You know, you see parents going out and they're buying up the clothes, they're buying clothes, the uniforms, they're buying books, and they're really going all out, mm -hmm. getting the child ready physically. But it's so important to work with that child to make the transition mm -hmm. from primary school into high school and, and the other things. Because um, in primary school, they tend to be playing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of play going on. And really and truly, you want to start working with your child really closely from standard five. From standard five, mm -hmm. right? Because um, they're getting ready to take CXCs and they're still in a play mood. Yeah. That is so distracting. <laughs> You're lowering it, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's a transition so, right there. That's a real transition. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. They're, they're trying to make that move from one point to the, to other. the other. And it's uh, especially for parents. And let's face the fact, in our country right now, we've got young parents. Yes. The, the trying to transition is something that we've learned from our parents. Yes. So, so I, five, really, mm -hmm. I really want parents really need to start working with their children from, say, standard four, talking to them about you know, doing away with the playing, mm -hmm. because this playing is the real, I mean, yes, they're children, but there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. And the play, they have recess, they have time to play, but not in classes. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to start working with them with that. Mm -hmm. Because when they get into high school, you're not going to have teachers that are going to be compassionate and tolerant. Mm -hmm. You'll know, get a demerit. The and you have X number of demerits, you're, get an, you're getting a detention, mm -hmm. and after that, you're out the door. It's, there's that, tol that level of tolerance isn't there. So it's really, really important as a parent mm -hmm. to be m in more involved than just buying the books and buying uniforms. Mm -hmm. You have to be engaged with your parents, and I call it being present, mm -hmm. right? And go visit the child's teacher, find out how your child is doing. Mm -hmm. Is this child misbehaving? And teacher, you know, a lot of times teacher would send a note, child, I'll bring that note to you. I would never take it at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're telling on me, I'm not going to take that to my parent. So you need to be checking in with, your, with the teacher. Mm -hmm. You need to be making sure that this child is doing his homework. Yeah. If a child comes home every day and tell you not have any homework, you need to be asking how come, right? Attend PTA meetings. That's where you learn how you can help the school, yeah. the things that you can do to, to give back to your school, where, where your child of is. Of course. You need to be very interested in what this child is doing and how the child is doing. If, if a child has a parent who is engaged, you have a child who is going to be focused. Mm -hmm. All right. I work with um, I work with children right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll tell you, the parents who come in and check on their children are really the ones who don't have a lot of problems, problems with the children. Right. But you know, Jenny, yeah. uh, one of the things, and, and, and I fall right back to young parents, mm -hmm. because this is, as much as it's nature, it has become, uh, uh, to a certain extent, a problem. Because we're not as focused as we are supposed to be, because we weren't ready. Nature. But we tend to use school and teachers more as babysitters, babysitters and we don't yeah. want to eventually be yeah. engaged with school so again let's talk about how important it is for a parent to visit a school talk to a teacher and make sure that child does his or her homework i can't overemphasize how important it is for parents to come in mm -hmm. one the teachers see the parent coming in so that child will get the attention the child needs because the parent is coming in and check in mm -hmm. right even if you're young, especially young people, I hope you're listening, come in and check on your child. Go to the teacher and say, how's my child doing? Because sometimes that teacher is trying to get in contact with the parent and yeah. the parent has, doesn't come in. Mm -hmm. Your child doesn't get as much attention from that teacher as the ones who the parents are showing up. Yeah. I, I mean, let's face it, that's, that's reality. And what okay? does visiting the school talking to the parent, the teacher, <laughs> it and the says th I to am, transition. I am interested. Mm. I am interested in my child. I want to see my child get into high school. You know, um, the other day, it was time when, when it was time for them to get their applications to go on to high school, yes. right? There's some parents who never came by to check how come my child didn't bring back, you know, bring a paper for high school. Mm -hmm. Some of the teachers were not recommending the child to go on to high school, mm -hmm. right? You needed to know that. So you're going off looking for, um, 
you're looking for for uniforms and things like this mm -hmm. but you don't know what high school your child is going to go to because you're, you're not checking mm -hmm. i cannot overemphasize the importance of coming to the school go to the pta meetings know what's happening with your child and this is of okay. course a step in transitioning them right excellent now the image you know how they say birds of a feather flock together mm -hmm. You need to also be looking at who your, your, your child's friends are. Who is this child hanging with? Is this some child who's not interested in school? Because that image goes with that child. Mm -hmm. All right? Definitely. I put a, a picture of image up here. I also put, you never get an, a second chance to make a first opinion, uh, a first impression. Mm -hmm. Really, the first impression is so important when you're going into high school. From they go over, because the schools take them to visit these high schools. When your child goes to visit the high school, you need to make sure that child looks good and is making a good impression because that's how they're looking at children yeah. to come to their high school. So it starts there. Parents really need to be focused on how to get your child into a good high school. Making and first impressions, you need to talk to your child about making good impressions. How does that child, is, does he have a haircut? Is he tucked in? How does he look? How does she look? Mm -hmm. Im impressions, appearance is very important. And, and I, like that you I like that you mentioned it because nowadays you'll find uh, kids who are very vocal mm -hmm. and might say the wrong things and that does wrong for their impression, right? Right, right. The behavior, you need to be talking to your child about their behavior, how they're carrying themselves. Okay. Um, don't your beliefs don't make you a better person your behavior does so it's not what you believe child it's not that mommy is telling you to do this or do that you need to when you go over to these high schools when you're in classes remember your teacher has to recommend you to go into high school mm -hmm. so your behavior in her class will you know it'll affect how she recommends you you know i, 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 want, I don't know if, if, if parents are aware of this the teacher has to recommend this child. So you need to be making sure you're interfacing with the teacher. Definitely. And it, and it strikes me that nowadays parents would say, and it's not a bad thing to uh, when it's used the proper way. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody tell you anything that comes out of your mouth. You defend yourself and you answer them. And many a times making an impression, uh, you uh, if, if you go to somewhere and a teacher would ask you a question, and the way you respond also does something mm -hmm. for your first impression, right? Mm -hmm. You remember when, when parents used to teach us to say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, that kind of thing. We need to go back to doing that, you yes. know? Yes. We need to teach our children these basic, basic skills of saying thank you, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, that kind of thing. We're not doing it. And children, children talk to adults any old way they want to. And I'm telling you, parents, and I'm talking to parents, not the child, you really need to be talking to your children about first impressions yeah. especially when they go to visit these high schools because they do go visit the high schools to determine if they want to go there but they're also looking at you to see if they want they you, want to, you come to come there. to the school <laughs> yeah. because uh, let's face the fact if a child is always in the uh, you know in some sort of bad or have a bad reputation mm -hmm. then why would i want that reputation to be reflecting on reflected on my school well, why would i want to deal with it yes you see? So, so there we it's go. It's really important. Mm -hmm. Really, really important. Now, this thing right here, I put this in here because we know that in the primary schools, you know, these children, the little boys are encouraging little girls to send them pictures of the nude Oops. pictures, right? And I'm talking from standard five, they're harassing the little girls. Wow. So parents need to really be aware and talking to their children. This is really important. Talk to your child mm -hmm. because things like this, when, when they get angry with each other, all of a sudden, they start sending it off to their little friends, yeah. right? That kind of stuff can get out there. And it gets out there and other people get a hold of it. I mean, really and truly, it's against the law to be forwarding that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's against the law. It, it, it's, it, it's really unacceptable. But the thing is, they're starting it that young. So talk to your children. But Jenny, another thing that, uh, that strikes me as we talk about talk to your children this is also a big part of transitioning. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would I want to give my child standard four, standard three, standard five, a phone that is internet capable? Yes, you, need to, you, you would want for them to have a phone in, in, in the event of an emergency. Mm -hmm. So why would I want to give them something? Is it because of style? What do you think this is doing to our transition? 
Let me tell you, mm -hmm. a lot of parents want their children to have the best, right? And it's like, well, I didn't have it, so I want my child to have it. Yes. You know, a little flip phone? If you want to keep track of your child or you want your child to have something so you can contact them, those little flip, phone, flip phones are, are, are okay because there's no internet on it or anything mm -hmm. like that. If your child goes home, you can check on them, things. But a lot of parents, I didn't have it, so I want my child to have it. And so they'll give their child, you know, see little kids with iPhones, <laughs> iPhones. And then they've got their own Facebook. Yes, they do, and it's it's so scary. And I, I don't know if parents are, are paying attention. Do you go in and say to your child, you know what? Um, I want to know who you're talking to, yeah. that kind of thing. And you have to have established that relationship. But let's say you didn't establish the relationship. Start now. Mm -hmm. You need to get become very close to your child because I'm telling you there are people out here and a lot of little boys and they want to be accepted. A lot of children want to be accepted. You know, so parents have a responsibility from primary school. Start talking to your children. Go born. check their phone. You know, and, and just as you say that, the, the, the reflect, reflecting on transition, the more you build that relationship with your child, the easier it yes. is for you to make the transition. Yes, yes. See, I, I, I hear parents who say, well, um, she don't want to talk to me. Well, you have to establish the relationship. Of You're course. the parent. You know, or, or parents will say things like, well, I can't hug him. Nobody never hugged me. Well, this is when you start. You start. Es create that with your child. Break the cycle. Mm -hmm. So parents before us didn't know better. They didn't hug. They learn that from their parents. Mm -hmm. But we can make our own new, you know, our own new way of doing things. Yes. And you want to have a relationship with a child so that anything happens, that child will come to you first because they have a safe, trusting relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And things like sexting, mommy, you know, this little boy that harassed me, want to take nude pictures of myself. You need to be the first person they come and talk to, and I can't fly off the handle. Yeah. I have to be open to hearing what this child is sharing with me so that they come and share with me. Mm -hmm. This right here is a big, big, big thing, and it starts in primary school. I want parents to know this because a lot of parents think this starts in sixth form. No, it doesn't. It starts in primary school. Wow. So These again, little it, boys are harassing little girls. It's actually talk with your child about sexting. And uh, and uh, I can't see it's uh, sexting and revenge porn okay. because it becomes revenge, revenge porn, porn when they get upset with you. Yeah. Okay, but the thing is, you know, start early talking to your children, and if you haven't started, start, start, become your child's confidant. And you should be the first person they talk to. You can't fly off of the hand and start real up because then the child won't trust you. And then you become that parent. Uh, 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 we, we 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 spoke about it that last time. It's, it's best to build that relationship with them. But there we go on our next slide. And I'm sorry if I keep moving along, but I have twice I, I, I need to get through. <laughs> and it's the best move. So we're making the transition, yeah. and it starts here as well. Yeah. So here we go. So I put on here, I just put some pictures because it's really important. In primary school, the kids are still kids, so they're fighting and all this kind of thing. Mm. And they, they use a lot of really foul language, some of these children. Yes. And the bullying. If you take that into high school you will become more culpable, okay? In high school, there's less tolerance for, for misbehavior than there is in primary, primary school. school. Much, much, much less. Parents need to talk to their kids. Now, if at home I'm bullying my children, the children learn that from me and they'll take it to school. So I really need to be doing some self. I, and I know we've got 12 slides, Jenny, uh -huh. but I, I, one thing I want for us to touch on yeah. quickly is how does parents bully their kids? Just, for, just so folks can know and what it does to transitioning. Well, you know, let me tell you. A lot of children are growing up in homes where there's domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, maybe a father, sometimes a mother, mm -hmm. who is, is physically beating up on, on a parent, on, on, a, on, a, on, on a partner. A on a oh, partner. on a partner, okay. Yes. And sometimes these children are seeing this, right? Sometimes that goes on to the child. So, for example, um, you have some parents who will tell the child that, you know, they can't do anything. And if the child tries to have friends or even things like that, they will, you know, they'll come home and get beat up on. 
Okay, parents bully children in that you 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 do this and don't ask me any questions. Remember that autocratic parent mm -hmm. I spoke mm -hmm. about, Fidel Castro parent, who you will do what I say. You, I say. Um, yes, you you have no recourse. You can't ask me any questions, right? That's bullying. So the child goes to school. There's no way I can talk to a parent. So I go to school and I come to school angry and I will take it out of you. But even right? so, they, they, they go to school and this is what they're seeing in the home. So it's, yeah. like, it's to them, it's, it's normal. perfectly normal. It's normal. Yes. It's very, very normal. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, again, talking to parents, a lot of women will stay in relationships and say, well, I'm doing it for the kids. I don't want my child to grow up in a home that's broken. And so they stay. You're not doing that child any favors, yeah. right? Because the child is learning some really bad behaviors and taking it to school. Making it hard for them. And to the transition. cycle continues. Yes. You break the cycle. We break the cycle here because we get more information. We know. All right. So we have to break the cycle. All right. um, moving right on. Be prepared. As a, as, a parent, mm -hmm. as a parent, you need to be making sure when this child is getting ready to go into high school, mm -hmm. when he starts high school, in fact, talk to him before he goes. No, go home and tell me you don't have homework. Because if you had classes today, teacher talk about things, you go back and you read your notes. Mm -hmm. If you don't have homework, come and read your notes. Homework is actually studying. Right. Uh, going over your notes. That's right. homework. Going over your notes. And if you bring home anything like, like projects from school no child should be coming home i, I, I tell you I, i've seen kids where they come home every day and they don't have homework you see them sitting outside Straight talking to, to girls really. or they yeah, exactly and uh, that's another thing parents you you shouldn't should not have access <laughs> <laughs> they should not have access to a tablet 24 7. Mm -hmm. i'm sorry they have to earn time on that tablet after they finish homework they finish their chores you can give them so much time on the tablet mm -hmm. but that tablet is not it's, it's not supposed to be carte blanche, yeah. where they just have it whenever they want to. Wow. They, earn, they should earn time on that tablet or that telephone. Okay, I'm deadly serious about this. All these things are actually deadly giving serious. actually uh, best ways for you to transition them for life. Yes, that, that tablet, ooh, because I'll tell you, that tablet will eat up their time. I watch, <laughs> I watch it. I watch it with my own nephews, right? Mm -hmm. They will be on that thing 24-7 if you don't stop them. They have to earn, earn time. And they get so many minutes. You can give them 30 minutes if they finish their chores on time. Mm -hmm. They get another 30 minutes if they finish their homework. And don't come home and tell me I don't have homework. Because no tablet tonight, period. <laughs> right? The television, same thing. They should earn time or in front TV. of that TV. They shouldn't just be able to sit at that TV as they want to all day. They're in high school now. But Jenny, okay. what's so hard? Parents go to work eight to five, nine to five. Some have got shift work. Lock up and the tablet they, till and, 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 and when they come home, they would say, you know what? And I'm and I'm and I'm playing devil's advocate uh -huh. here. When they get home, they would say, you know what? I need time to rest. And if mm -hmm. I give on the tablet, chances are I want to have at least two hours, want parent three hours first. You're a parent first, and you have to parent when they get into high school. You really have to parent. I mean, you have to parent when they're younger, yeah. but when they get into high school, you really have to parent. I don't care how tired you're tired. You you sign <laughs> on for 18 years of this. Sorry, <laughs> you sign on for this. Mm -hmm. You have to come home and find it. Mm -hmm. You have to find it, dig deep, and find the energy to parent hello it is the reality as we yeah. speak jenny that parents are doing these things and they need to stop if they want to transition them into In, life uh, to be successful yes to be successful i mean they can transition but how are they transitioning if they're not getting any guidance from you as the parent okay so um so write down their homework you tell your child Take notes, make sure you write down what teacher expects from you because I, I again I'm talking about my little nephews. They come in, they know, they know write the what the guidance is, what it is the teacher wants. Right? Mm -hmm. Take down what is up there. Mm -hmm. If you don't know something, ask for help. Yeah. If you as a parent you don't know the material, ask your neighbor, get some friend of yours, uh, an older child, to come and help do the home help yeah. them with the homework, explain. And don't do the homework for them because you want to hurry up, get out and do something else. Yeah. Make sure you show them how to do it and get them to do it themselves. Again, you're teaching them responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay? Pay attention, study, reread the day's material. You really need to emphasize these things. So I know our parents are saying, well, I never got to high school, so we can't get, we can't get any kind of thing there. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, can enforce these kinds of things of here course. with your child. 
And this is actually giving them what you didn't mm. get. Yep. Mm. Make a schedule. All right. Get, get, make sure you buy your child a little notebook with a, time, you know, with, a, with a calendar in it so that they can put down all the things that they have to do for the month. Mm -hmm. Make a schedule of things that they have to get done because there are lots of things. Um, all those extracurricular things you need to do. Hey, pace yourself. You know, because they want to get into all the sports and they want to get into volleyball, basketball, all these things. What comes first? What comes first? Of course, getting your work done, your school work That's done. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're a student first. Yes. <laughs> the extracurricular stuff, that can wait. But you have to get the other stuff done first. As a parent in my home, school is priority. Absolutely. That's your my responsibility. And you get that done first. Then we could talk. Your job, darling, as a your job is to be a student. First. First. Yes. The other stuff, the brata. What? Do not um, what? Stick to your schedule. Mm -hmm. you no know, Facebook, no Instagram, no Snapchat, no whatever, mm -hmm. until you have finished what you're supposed to do. Then. Meaning you do your chores first, you do these other things first, and then you earn, repeat, E-A-R-N, you earn so much time on that tablet, your phone, in front of the TV. Please stop making children feel like they have a right to television, they have a right to Facebook. They don't. They don't. They do not. You are touching a nerve there okay. by saying um, they do, that they have a, uh, you know, that don't let them feel that they have a right because look, we're the parents. You don't mm -hmm. have a right to Facebook. You've got a right to get your schoolwork done first. Yeah. And there's a nice way of telling them this, of course. you know, there's a nice way of telling them this, but if you want to have a successful adult, you want to have a successful high school student, mm -hmm. you absolutely have to have rules. Personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Personal responsibility. Of course. And we need to teach this to our children. Enjoy high school. Enjoy high school. High oh, school I is love fun. high school. Okay. TCC, my alma mater, down a PG. TCC. Yeah. <laughs> it's high school. <laughs> love really, high school. It's, it's, a, it's a time of their life, right? Mm -hmm. But they have to be aware of the clicks. They're clicks. You know this. You have the in click and then you have the out click, click. and you have the a new. Click. You know. I like this click. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, you, again, you want to be making sure that you're checking with your child, making sure they're not being bullied, making sure that they have great self-esteem, that if they're yes. not a part of a click, that they're still okay. Yeah. But you as the parent, you have to be making sure that you help to build up your child, right? right. Be careful of drinking. You want to be monitoring and checking that your child isn't drinking or drugging. Um, I know marijuana has been um, decriminalized, but it's still... Yes, no, 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 It's a little. Oh, yes. The thing is, the thing is, though, we don't want high schoolers using, period. We don't. Because it still affects their brain. I don't, care, I don't care what, what they say about they it. Say about it it yeah. affects your brain. It affects mm -hmm. your central nervous system. And in fact, if you're in school, you don't want to be messing with that stuff. You, you don't. don't. You don't okay? want to be focused. As a parent, you don't want to be encouraging that. You want to be making sure that your child is alert and is learning. Right. And you want to talk to them about making sure they're not cheating. Because that will get them kicked out of school quicker than anything else I know. Mm -hmm. Cheating right. means copy. All right. Copy. No copy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> leave the pirate. Leave the pirating elsewhere. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we're quickly okay, running. Okay. So out now of we're time, running uh -huh. to, to sixth form. High mm -hmm. school to sixth form. You what is that really, transition like? Yes. No, that transition is a big transition. They finish high school. Now listen to me. In high school, you still have supportive teachers. When you get into sixth form, not a whole different ball game. Yeah. Nobody is going to be spoon feeding you. You don't do your work, oh well, you're going to be out the door and yeah. you're going to lose all that money. Mm -hmm. So your child has got to have learned all that stuff in high school mm -hmm. about doing the work, knowing how to study, how to take notes, because that's all preparation for sixth form, yeah. right? Nobody's going to be pushing them. If they're not coming to school, nobody will call you parent and say your child not come to school. But it does that. You need to be on the ball. You have to be the one. Your $2,000 or however much money mm -hmm. is what's on the line. At this particular point, because of all the transitioning that you've done, the positive transitioning that you've done, 
at this prepared particular point. This. Yes, they're prepared for they're this. They're prepared. And they know now that this is their responsibility yes. and nobody's going to be Nobody's there. going to be following behind wow. them. Nobody. Personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, hopefully you have prepared them because by now they're almost 18 years old. Yeah. Or they are 18 years old. So they have the personal responsibility mm -hmm. of making sure that they don't waste your money. Wow. Your money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> your money. <laughs> Drinking, getting stoned, that kind of stuff. The peer pressure in, in the peer pressure in junior college is high. Yes, very, all, the heads very high. all the heads moved a while ago. Yeah, uh, <laughs> very, very peer pressure, and the peer pressure to drink, the peer pressure to smoke, the peer pressure to cut classes. Let's go party. Let's go do something else, right? That your money. Just remember that. So you needed to be having this discussion beforehand, yeah. but you still want to be checking, you still want to be talking to your child, yes. okay? Then. Budgeting, right? Because you give them no an allowance, you also have to give them money for books and things like that. They need to learn to budget, yeah. because guess what? This is not preparation for university, yeah. going abroad. They have to know how to budget. You need to be teaching them this kind of stuff, because when they're on their own, even if they have a scholarship, you have to help them with some money for living and things like that. So you have to be teaching them how to budget, right? Studying on their own. The note taking, all those things they learned in high school or should have learned that you should have been making sure mm -hmm. that you push them to learn. Having a schedule, that kind of thing. Really important stuff because it prepares them for this. Okay? Right. Turning in their work and having balance. Balance meaning there's enough study, there's enough relaxation. Mm -hmm. They're doing the things they need to do. I need to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Your child is going away to study. She's going away. She's not going to be in the country. You cannot put your little fingers out there and grab her to grab help her. her. To yeah. She is alone out there. You want to be talking to them. Are they going to be in a dorm? They'll be in an apartment, who they're sharing with. Again, you want to be looking at those kinds of things. These are very important so you, factors. So if, if you have the funds to go for the first time with them to see what they're, where they're settling in, to give yourself yeah. some peace of mind, but also to help that child to get started on their first, you know, the first semester. Discuss substances, drinking, driving, getting drunk, making sure they go out as a group and go as a group and go Come home as, as a group. A group. Yes. You don't want to get out there and be drinking and driving, especially not abroad. Not abroad. Oof, you no, don't I, want that, that to be happening. You don't want to. You don't want to do no. it. It's you know, and this is no, of course, no. this, uh, you know, it's it's a crazy transition when you go on out there, didn't pay attention, and then you think that you're right there at home because you get yeah. uh, you get so used to it. You must follow the rules. You have to follow rules. Mm -hmm. Must, must, must. Um, budget. You have to talk to your child about sticking to the budget. Because they, a lot of times they don't understand the money out there is a lot less because our money transitions into less. So when they go with that, they have to stick to that budget. Mm -hmm. Come at me. I remember eating custard and <laughs> making spaghetti by the whole pot full and eating that all <laughs> week long. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's, it's, it's a transition that is usually very hard. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's done. Lots of people have done it. We just need to prepare them all the way back again from high school. Start teaching them about budgeting. Teach them about these things that they need to know. Yeah, okay. excellent. And being responsible. They really, when they get to um, be abroad. And a lot of children, some children get scholarships from high school. I, I, don't, I don't like that idea at all. Because it. from high school, getting a, a, a scholarship and going abroad mm -hmm. and going to college over there, you haven't had time to really work with them. Because high, high school alone is really hard. So it's to best go, to go to do your tertiary I level I prefer at home. my child to go from, to sixth form. You have two years to really work with them, with the budgeting, with all the other things. And making, having them grow up and you're there to catch them. All right. You know, All right. really, really important. Anyway, much to think about. Talk with your child. Talk with your child. Talk with your, your child. child, please. It's very important too. It's really very important. important too. Really. But that's the way when it comes to the whole transitioning phase from uh, from birth all the way up to preparing them for life and then them moving on. Yes. Jenny, and that's what we do. We're supposed to be preparing our children to be solid adults, solid citizens. 
but it doesn't, it's not easy. And you can't put them out there and go, well, handle it. And, and just do your own thing. Handle it because, well, I never have it. Nobody never helped me, you know. No, you, you are the parent. You brought them here. And one more important factor that I'd like to factor in here is that parents should always know that your child is not your property. <laughs> They're not your property. They've got their own minds. That's what you're supposed to develop for them. They've got their own ways. Just help them to balance that out and prepare yeah. them for life. Prepare them for life. Jenny, it's always good. Thank you so much. Love the green, love the lipstick, love the hair. Ah. But I'll tell you what else we love. <laughs> we love listening to the good music. And we've got No Fair DJs in the house as well. We love uh, going over other segments. The next one coming up, we've got some folks from Key Cocker who is going to be in talking to us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.